What is going on everybody? It's nothing but skills and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how I run my skill build now I run this to do solo heroic control points and then I even use this to run in four-man groups for heroic missions and it works really good It's great for cow control. It puts out a lot of damage and if you build it right It can really really be very impressive to use now one thing I want you guys to know mine is not min max so I do have almost all the roles I want but I want to get them fully maxed out. And when I do that, the skills will come back a little bit quicker. The skills will hit a little bit harder. So that means I will be able to destroy content a lot faster. Now, the great thing about this build is you can just sit back, let the skills do all the work, and then continue on. And for a while, I was trying to figure out the right type of skill build I wanted to run in title of day eight. And I wanted to find a skill build that would actually work. Because you know, in title of day seven skill builds, or everything right it was able to farm content really quick but when i first started my skill build in title update 8 i was having trouble trying to find the balance of a really good build and having a build that could get through the content fast enough because at the end of the day if you're trying to farm for new gear being able to push through missions being able to push through control points faster is always better but i found the perfect balance that i really enjoy and when i run in group play this puts out a lot of damage and this is heroic right here so this is heroic gameplay that you guys have six skill tiers so i maxed out on skill tier now i am running the demolitionist class with this build for the weapons i'm running surge which is a named weapon that gives me perfect spark headshots grant 25 percent skill damage for eight seconds so every time i get a headshot for those eight seconds my skills will do 25 percent more damage so if the skill is down i start getting some headshots perfect spike will proc now for my secondary i run the send off and this i can just have it holstered because it has perfectly rooted while equipped and in cover all skill damages and healing is increased by 30 percent for 15 seconds now the buff is lost when you exit cover and this can occur once every 60 seconds now perfectly rooted it does say while equipped so if you guys remember this is a passive talent so as long as it's all my equipped means all my gear i am running this so i just leave this holstered the whole time and it works let's get into the build so for the mask i'm running a china light mask i'm running a three piece so i get that 15 percent explosive damage with the one piece right here i have skill tier for the attributes i have hazard protection skill damage i would like to have skill haste instead of hazard protection and then for the mod i'm running skill haste on there so this is the one piece i would like to change so i would love to get rid of that hazard protection for the chest i am running my first piece of Hana Yu, I do have a two piece. So the first piece is gonna give me 10% skill haste. I have the plus one skill tier. I have 11% skill haste, 9% skill damage. And then I have an offensive mod here. I would like this to be a yellow mod and that would be better. Now I had to use my roll on the talent. So I rolled skilled because I love skilled. Skilled's great. Skill kills have a 25% chance to reset skills. And if you can have your skills more often, that means you can put out more DPS. You just keep throwing your skills over and over and over. And with having something like the two skills I'm running, it's really gonna work. And you'll see the skills in just a second. But that is one change. The headshot mod, I would like to have be a skill mod instead. For the holster, we are running our second piece of Hana Yu, and that's gonna give us that 10% skill damage. We do have the one skill tier, and then we have 10% skill damage and 9.6% skill haste. So you're gonna get the trend right here. A lot of skill damage, a lot of skill haste. We want our skills to come back. Now for the knee pads, this is our second piece of China Light. This is gonna give us that 10% skill haste. We have the one skill tier, then we again, skill haste and skill damage. That's what you want to go with this build because we want to put out a lot of damage and we want our skills to come back quicker. Now, if we get into the gloves, the gloves are going to be our first piece of wyvern wear and that's because we get that 10% skill damage. That's a great piece to put on any skill build. That 10% skill damage with one piece, it's hard to not run this with any type of skill build you're running. We have that one skill tier, then we have 10% skill damage and 12% skill haste. A god roll set of piece of gloves. This is my piece right here. This is the one god roll piece I have on this build. If we get into the backpack, I am running my third piece of China Light. Now, a lot of you guys might say, why don't you run the exotic backpack? But I really like having this talent called Shock and All. Applying the status effect to an enemy increases the total skill damage and repair. And since I'm using the mortars, 
they do cause the enemy to bleed because a lot of times I don't fully kill them because in heroics, they have a lot of health, right? So I cause that status effect. So then I'm gaining that skill damage for 20% for 20 seconds. Now, I do have one core attribute of skill tier. So we want all six to have skill tier. Then we have status effects on here. Now, I would like to have that change for skill haste. Then I would like to have skill damage a better role. We do have the utility model here, so we put skill haste on here. So ideally, this is exactly what I want. Just better rolls, except the status effects, I want skill haste. Now, if you don't want to run shock and all, you can run the exotic backpack. So for the skills, I am running the artillery turret. So this is the mortar turret. And then look, it says it does apply a bleed status to the effect if you don't kill the enemy, right? So if you hit them with it, it will apply that bleed. So that's a status effect. That's why shock and all works really good. Now, it does have a 10 seconds cooldown, which is really good because we have all that skill haste. The damage on it is almost 3 million, a little bit over 3 million. The blast radius is 6.8 meters. It has 10 shots, and we are at tier 6, so we get the, bonus, the benefit of running that. Now, this is amazing for crowd control, for destroying enemies, for putting a lot of damage on enemies. And you can spam this pretty good. And with only having a 10 second cooldown after your last charge, it's amazing. Now, the way I have this modded is I do have a damage mod on there, and then I have a mortar mod. So you're going to get the damage of 2.9%, which isn't maxed. I definitely want to fix that. And then we do have we do have a skill haste on there, and then we do have one extra shot on there. So those are the three that I usually run when I run this. Now, if we get into my second skill, so you already know I like running the artillery turret. I like running the cluster seeker mines now these cluster seeker mines are going to do 2.5 million damage on here and that's because i'm not fully maxed out with this build once you get everything maxed out you should be around the 3 million range with your clusters now i personally run skill haste mods on here if you want to have more damage you can run the damage mods on here i feel that just having them come back a little bit quicker, even though it's only two to three seconds, it's it's a big difference, especially when you're you're fighting targets and you need them to come back. So having them around 26.2 seconds isn't too bad, and I have skills. Now, if you want, you can run two damage mods, and then you can run one extra cluster mine, so the plus one. But I personally like running the skill haste. That's up to you, and those numbers will change depending if you run damage or skill haste. But yeah, this is the build right here. This is the build I love running. And the great thing about this build is you can run it solo or you can run it in a group. I feel that most skill builds do excel in a group because some of the fire isn't focused on you, right? They can't focus your turrets. But overall, I feel that this is a great way to run this build. And I'm becoming a big fan of the turret, right? The artillery turret. I'm really having a lot of fun with this. And the more I play with it, the better I get and the easier it is to aim with this. So I can just spam these over and over and take those big chunks of health and armor from those enemies. But don't worry, this does really work really well in solo play too. So for you skill build players who've been looking for a build to solo heroic control points, this is what I've been using. The artillery turret applies a lot of damage and when I get a kill, hopefully that 25% chance that I get from skilled procs my seekers and then I can just spam my seekers. And you'll see in just a second, how quick I get my artillery back with all 10 shots. So right now, you see my artillery is on cooldown. 10 seconds goes by. I'm going to end up getting a kill. And then once I get that kill, it's going to reset my um, my clusters. So look, my clusters are still on cooldown, but it's going to come back faster because I get that kill. So it's instant. I had like 5 seconds or 4 seconds left, and it came back because I got a kill and skilled proc. That's why I think skilled is probably still the best piece to put on the chest and i think if you're running the artillery with these mortars causing bleed shock and awe is amazing but this is my favorite skill build to run in title update 8 i feel like skill builds are going to make a comeback once we start to find all the really cool skills they have and i find them to be really useful in some of the harder difficulties i just completed my first legendary mission and we had a guy running an artillery turret like this with um, the clusters and it works so good. It actually was a benefit to helping us complete that legendary mission. And I was really excited to see that skill builds are a crucial part in completing some of the harder content in the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys enjoy this build. You tweak it, you take the blueprint and you make it better and you find those god roll pieces. And 
that just helps you become a better player. Don't forget, if you guys enjoy these videos, always leave a thumbs up. And as always, if you're new, first time catching any of Nothing But Skills' videos, hit the subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so when I release a video, you guys don't miss out and you catch all the really cool content. But for now, guys, I will see you guys in the next Division 2 video. Until then, Nothing But Skills is out.